<laughs> it's a conversational worked. show. Uh, we 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 talk to you, and then you answer questions like, "What's okay. your favorite ice cream?" Count Bobula. What's ah, your it's vanilla because I'm the most boring person on the planet. How you like that? A, that's a lie. I love no, it. that is true. That oh, is really? absolutely the truth. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Now, do you have like a favorite kind of vanilla, like French vanilla or vanilla bean, or are you just a straight vanilla guy? Or Madagascar vanilla? Are you fancy so, like Ram V? Oh, my my friends, let me tell you something. We have, of course, uh, down here in Southern California. Where, where are you guys located? You got one's in Virginia, one's in Ohio. Yes, Ohio. I'm in, I'm okay, in Cincinnati. Yes, he's in Cincinnati, and I'm in Williamsburg. Virginia. Out here on the West Coast, we have a thing <laughs> called Salt and Straw, which is like. This apparently it's like this crazy lady that runs it. She's like uh, some sort of just like dictator uh, when it comes to an like ice cream running her. Dictator. I love she's this. like an ice cream dictator. Yeah. You have the Mister Sinister of ice cream. In- exactly. <laughs> she's she's doing all kinds of experiments uh, of a genetic variety on these ice creams. No, so she uh, she she's apparently like a crazy person, but she makes like these really bizarre ice cream flavors. So it'll be like bone marrow and jelly bean and like um, (laughs) you know burnt honey and lavender and shit right and then i can i swear i'm sorry yes Yes. totally fine you're fine you're fine like fucking shit uh no so so she makes she makes these weird ass ice cream flavors and like so and like that's why you go there to get this weird shit but like when i go there i'm like well do they have a vanilla (laughs) so i go and they have a thing called double fold vanilla what does it mean i don't know but you know what tastes real good (laughs) So it's you don't know what it means, but you just like it. Like there's I just nothing. know I like it. It is it is a super vanilla y flavor. I'm very pleased by it. <laughs> That's it. Well what is salt and straw though? I'm Googling now, it right now. now. I'm, I'm Googling yeah. it right now. Salt and straw. Salt and straw. All right, yeah. it checks out. It says it's run by some crazy lady who lives. Yeah, right there. It's on the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> this woman is crazy. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, salt and straw, it ships nationwide. So if we're interested, um, we can have it delivered to us here, wherever we are. This does. This look- episode brought to you by Salt and Straw. It's vegan indulgence, <laughs> dairy-free decadence. Now, are you vegan? Is that why you like it, or do you get the milk stuff? Like, no, you- I get the milk stuff. I'm from okay. Wisconsin originally, dude. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> no. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see that on your bio, so I missed the Wisconsin. <laughs> it's not there. Uh, don't advertise it or anything. Okay. You know. So yeah, so Salt and Straw will deliver ice cream to your inbox. Now, what you should do is, um, if you ever come to Cincinnati, Ohio, we have two <laughs> local ice cream places. We have Graters, which is like the fancy pants ice cream, which has been around for a really long time. It's super expensive. They sell it in grocery stores. It's like twelve dollars for like a regular size thing, but it's super fancy and delicious. But then they have the working man's ice cream, the ice cream of like the common man called United. The Dusty Roads ice cream, if you will. Yes, the it is. It's the Dusty Roads of ice creams. It's the son of a plumber. Like you get it at a gas station <laughs> where you buy cigarettes and beer, and it is. Amazing. It's the best ice cream I've ever had. It's before. better than it's better than Graders. Yeah. Oh yeah. It dominates Graders. It, it cuts a this ice cream. Too. This ice cream seizes the means of production, and I love it. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. It's wonderful. Like they have this flavor called peanut butter and chocolate chip. It's vanilla ice cream with like. Okay, now I'm back on board because I was getting a little crazy for me. <laughs> it's it's vanilla ice cream with like thin like layers of peanut butter in it with like chocolate like chocolate shavings it's the greatest and best thing you'll ever have because it's salty and sweet and oh man like i've gained at least like 10 pounds from just just on this ice cream cream. yeah (laughs) just from living here like it's crazy from the working man's ice cream well that's because kevin that's because kevin i'm a working man and i don't need no fancy man's ice cream when i I i go where the people go to get ice cream with their lottery tickets and their cigarettes and their beer and their the chips. Times I go to that yeah. place. Yeah. The hard I, times ice cream. I eat cigarette ice cream. That's yeah. what I do. What? <laughs> <You're just laughs> That's working man's ice cream. Do they make that at this this fancy salt and straw cigarette ice cream? It's no, because it, look, this is ice cream of the proletariat, people. All exactly. right. Look. I don't eat that bourgeoisie ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I got to 
tell you, Bob, um, you are already one of my favorite interviews we've ever done on this podcast. Like, oh, I thank it. goodness. Like, you're wonderful. <laughs> like, you just come on guns blazing. Like, you come off kind of nonchalant because you're eating dinner. You're like, I don't give a fuck about this. But you got the A material, so I'm super <laughs> into it. Like, I was uh, super late with dinner. I'm so sorry, you guys. I, I'm super hungry. I thought he was eating. I thought he was eating cereal at first. It says Count Bobula. I was like, he's eating cereal. It's on brand. <laughs> he's got it all together. Now, now what's ready. for dinner? What's for dinner in the Quinn household today? I don't know what this is. It's some kind of chicken thing that my okay. wife made. It's it was done in the slow cooker. Oh, a lot of a lot of exotic spices and rice. It's incredible. Now, is it an actual slow cooker? Or do you guys have one of those like Instapot things? Is it an Instapot? We, we have we have both. Oh, she um, can't hide that Marvel money, son. Look at you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like, <laughs> He's going to choke, Bobby. Don't do that to the man. He's like, oh my he's, God. Our, he's our new favorite guest, and you're going to kill him on the first time he comes this, this on. There's Marvel money. There's nothing I can't buy. We got Viking <laughs> stoves. We got a wolf stove right next to it. We don't give a shit. We want the pottery barn in the pandemic. More expensive. Incredible. Oh, that's, that's hot to death. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, no. One of them, in my defense, one of them was a, a wedding gift so okay, okay. you know we did <laughs> which is a typical we demanded wedding. our rich relatives pay, pay for it <laughs> which is a typical wedding gift thing you always get a crock pot or a slow cooker for a wedding gift that's like that and a toaster and a blender and you're good you know exactly that's, yeah. you're, that is literally our shelf of crap that we got from <laughs> the wedding <laughs> now are you are you recently married bob or have you been married for quite some time well, we've been married for like 10 years and we were together for like, we've been together forever. Okay. So you're saying <laughs> I, this, I can't, I can't remember a time when we weren't together. So you're tier. saying this is a quality <laughs> slow cooker if it still works 10 years into the marriage, then is what you're saying. Oh yeah. Well, the, I, I don't know which one she used because we got, all right, here's where the Marvel money comes in. We have Marvel two slow money, cookers. I was going to say one from that Marvel money. One's Marble Money and one is regular people money. Brought his, brought, Nightcrawler brought his slow cooker. So well, that's, that's right. He bamped in. Put down the slow cooker, said, you know, happy uh, wedding, and took off. Happy wedding. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Bam. That's wonderful. Okay, so for those of you not familiar with, with Bob's work, he's he worked on Champions. Yes, so correct. Tell us a little bit about that for people who don't know what champions are, which people usually know what champions are. But people, you gotta know what champions are. The champions yeah. are the champions of the Marvel universe. No, it's it's a uh, it's a team of young superheroes ready to take on the world. We got Miss Marvel. We've got Braun. We've got Viv Vision. We've got who don't we have? We got Miles Morales. Miles we've got Morales, yeah. we've got Nova. We've got uh, Red Locust, Starling. Uh, Snow Guard, everybody's in this thing. That's Amadeus awesome. Cho is in there, right? Amadeus Cho, yes, correct. Because this wasn't the series started originally by Mark Wade, I guess. Didn't he like kind of kick this thing off? He then... he did, I believe, but it was it was like a relaunched mini that they did where Eve Ewing was writing it and then Simone DeMeo was drawing it okay. and then uh, and then the plague hit, yeah, uh, which kind of screwed up everything. So Simone had to go and do what he had to do and then. When all of a sudden they were like, "Hey, we're back on, Simone. What do you want to do?" He's like, "Guys, I'm I'm gone. I I can't finish this." So, um, they called me because nice. the reason you call Bob <laughs> because Bob is extremely reliable, <laughs> and Bob is talking about himself in third person, which I did. And, and they also and they also said, "Who needs a slow cooker?" I think Bob Quinn needs a slow. The, cooker. This guy looks hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Look how skinny he is. This poor this man. This is not a this is not a standard comic book artist. This needs to put on about fifty eight pounds. This guy. So yeah. So they they called me. I got to finish up the book. I had like the best time of my life, and uh and, and now it's on shelves. People, you got to go pick it up. It's great. A, well, I was telling my daughter. I was like, oh, I gotta you know put you to bed. I'll run downstairs. I have an interview. She's like, oh, who are you interviewing? And I said, Bob Quinn. And she's like, who's that? And I said, he's an artist. He did Champions. And she's like, well, who's in that? And she reads comics, but she's not up to date on like the new hot stuff. And I was like, well. Miss Marvel is with the big hand. She's like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, Miles Morales. She's like, awesome. So after Miles Morales, like, you get the she punch sold. card. Yeah. You're good to go. Like, you get to draw the hottest guy in comics, right? Miles. Everybody loves Miles. Oh. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Uh, but here's the thing, though. But my first Marvel Comics actual thing that I did was um, the 50th, I guess, issue of Miss Marvel, where they did, like, the multi-story thing. Uh, okay. So, like, I have a, I have a history with Kavala. Uh, <laughs> or what? I don't know. It was the first thing I did at Marvel. She's great, and um, like, 
I wasn't reading a ton of comics for a while. And then like they were getting all this press about, oh, they're they're doing this thing and she's Pakistani and she's Muslim and she's Miss Marvel now. And I was like, well, I'll read it. Let's see what happens. And like, I super enjoyed it. That's awesome. <laughs> As like an old ass dude. And I was like, oh, this is, this is a fun book for the youth. It's a lot of fun. She's writing fan fiction. She's got big hands. This is great. Um, <laughs> So I really enjoyed it. So then, like when I, that was the first book I got to draw from Marvel, I was like, "Hell yeah!" And then they were like, "Hey, do you want to go and do a Miss Marvel thing again, only as champions this time?" And I was like, "Well, yeah, obviously." So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Now, now this sounds like a, an instant success story, Bob. But you've been doing comics for like a thousand years, correct? I know I've been following you on Twitter for at least like four or five because you started like you've been doing this forever. Tell us about your first book. We know about what you're doing now. Well, not even what you're doing now because what you're doing now is different. But we yeah, know. True. About we know about the success. So tell us about coming up through the industry and how that worked out. Oh man. So I'll, I'll go back to the very beginning. Oh, uh, uh, I, I, usually, I usually don't talk about this, but, and I don't know why. I, the first thing I ever did, I ran a web comic for a million years. Um, and it was basically the story of a little, two little animals that basically farted and pooped and vomited on each other. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm in. <laughs> it was it was it was called Bear and Tiger. It's absolutely terrible, but it was like it was like a Russian military base, and there was a tiger and a bear, and they were just mean to each other, and that was pretty much it. And then like okay. all kinds of crazy crap happened. Um, and then I kind of stepped away for like a billion years because like uh, I came from the video game industry originally, um, straight out of college. I, I got a job at Disney, and oh, then wow. yeah, but but I was like I was like producing video games. So like basically what the job was was um, I was at the publishing end. So like I call up a developer and I go, the game that you're making for us sucks. Make it better or you're not getting paid. And I go, we're very sorry. We'll do it. And then uh, I eventually made my way through to, I was working at a development house. I did, um, I worked for Heavy Iron, which is the company that did like the SpongeBob games. And all this time I was either producing or designing. I was never doing artwork for anything. Hmm. But, and then uh, I eventually ended up at Activision where I, uh, we had a really weird situation where a product I was on got put on hold and I had nothing to do. So I would go and I would draw every day. And somehow in the, in the process of me drawing, um, Ben Acker of the thrilling adventure hour saw something of mine and liked it. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, and I was like, well, that's, that's funny. What, what, a, what a strange coincidence. So, um, I drew a picture of one of the characters of the, uh, do you guys listen to the thrilling adventure hour at all? No, no, but I listened to their sister podcast. The the I used to listen to the nerders, the Nerdist Writers podcast. Oh, okay. Well, they had they had a character called Carlisle Ravencastle, who I thought was he was like a Nosferatu, like overly dramatic Nosferatu vampire, who I thought was absolutely hilarious. So like, I drew a picture of him, and then I just tagged Ben, and I was like, I don't know, nothing will come of this. And then he immediately ends up in my DMs, and he's like, Dude, we're doing a book right now. Do you want to draw it? And wow. I had I had just come off up so. The first, that's like the first published thing I did. Before that, I'd actually done a graphic novel on my own. And I, I like basically was like, I talked to my wife. And I was like, I hate my job. I hate everything I'm doing. Can I just draw a comic book? Is that cool? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very <laughs> I had like the most understanding wife in the universe. Um, but so so basically, I took a year off and I, and I drew this book. And, you know, I'm still very proud of it to this day. You can buy it at any con that you find your old pal Bob at. Um, so I, I drew that. And then Ben saw my stuff. And then he was like, we're doing this thing do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, when can you start? Uh, I don't know, in like a month. That's too late. We're already behind. I was like, well, there goes that, right? <laughs> so they were like, well, That's how about you do- comics of you though. You're already behind. Like, oh, Yeah, cool. right. They were already super late. So they were like, well, would you like to do some flashback pages for us? And I was like, sure, I'll do that. It was just like one page per issue. And I delivered them. And then they were like, the artist needs, the artist that we got in your stead, um, needs more time will you do a full fill-in issue i was like sure so i delivered the issue and it, it didn't suck well, that's and then good. <laughs> miraculously and then <laughs> and then i did uh then they were like he actually had the other artist has to back out do you want to finish the series yes so i finished the series and then i delivered one the last book in the series in two weeks um, wow jesus wow. christ how much cocaine were you doing at that point like <laughs> That's a lot of that's a lot of salted straw. Bob. <laughs> Listen, uh, yeah, this guy. is this is body by ice cream. Okay, there's no <laughs> cocaine to be found around here. Um, so that essentially that I guess ingratiated me to the to the editor who then goes, hey, do you want to keep drawing stuff for me? I was like, all right, sure. So then from that I ended up doing the uh, Green Hornet sixty six meets the Spirit. Okay. And then I did uh, James Bond Origins. Uh, this is all for through Dynamite. 
And then I did Lone Ranger with Mark Russell. And then I did Red Sonia. And then uh, as that happened, I started picking up more Marvel work along the way. But that's basically my trajectory into comics. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, listen that's to great. what you started, though, with, like, Green Hornet and the Spirit. And, mm -hmm. and that's, I mean, the pressure from that alone has to be just daunting because you're doing, you know, Will Eisner stuff, for God's sakes. Oh, yeah. And and I was working with Fred Van Lente, who is, like. Who's brilliant. He, he's incredible. Like, the it, that, that book is so funny. Like, I, I was still pretty rough around the edges and i don't think i did the best job but like that guy knows how to draw stuff that's just or knows how to write stuff that's going to be fun to draw and his scripts are super easy to work off of like mm -hmm. he he describes just enough so that you have plenty of room to play but tells you exactly what you need to know so that you can get the essence of it down on the page and then just gives you a ton of room to you know free reign do what you got to do have a good time and that's why his books are always consistently really good like he yeah. just knows what to feed your the artist yeah because i think the first time i you popped up on my radar was around lone ranger stuff because mm -hmm. i've always been a fan and i was like this is interesting and it looked great like you did a wonderful job on that you and mark mm -hmm. russell killed that so that's awesome yeah i think th that's when they actually let me uh they let me color that one as well so Ooh, um fancy that was fun that's yeah cool. no mark is mark is great that that book is still one of my favorites of all time like it was like Mark is an incredible writer at, hey, here's some here's some social commentary. Here's something that you're not thinking about in, in the in the realm of today, right? Like the, the look at his work on Flintstones, look at the stuff on Snagglepuss. This was such a good ver like this I, I this was my favorite version of Mark Russell because it was a fun cowboy romp on top of the fact that like I felt like the that if you were looking for the 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 commentary on today you would absolutely find it right yes but you didn't need it in order to enjoy it like i think i think some of you know like the 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 flintstones issue that was about just buying crap right like that felt very today but like the 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 lone ranger story was such a lone ranger story but it was still so relevant to what's going on right now i don't know i, I really really love it that's awesome Thank you. And so yeah. then you, and then you did some, <laughs> you did some Red Sonia stuff, and the Red Sonia stuff came out what last year, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was like. Last it seems year. like the relaunch because a buddy of ours was doing Red Sonia, uh, Vampirella, Drew Moss was doing that. Oh yeah. I think all that kind of launched around the same time because it was like an anniversary for Red Sonia, correct? Uh, that one I can't speak to. I'm super like my comic book history is awful because okay. I was not a huge comic book reader growing up. Like I read. Uh, mostly as from, i started out as a web comic artist I, start, I i read mostly strip comics okay and um m the majority of what i read was actually mad magazine so like if you want to talk to me about like don martin and mort drucker and duck edwing and like all those guys dave berg let's let's talk but like when it comes to like old marvel stuff like i always feel like a like a sham because they're like oh if you remember the storyline from 1987 with nightcrawler and i was like nope i don't remember it i didn't read it sorry guys that's awesome i love i was busy watching a mountie get chopped in half in a comic book I'm stupid that's wonderful you know well, Bob loves Batman. Yeah, I'm a big because they even relaunched it recently, but it went away. But they relaunched it a couple years ago, and I was picking them up just out of habit. Like I, I read Mad Magazine as a kid, yep. and then I got to a point where I stopped reading it, and then I picked it up again in college. Oddly enough, because I was like, I'm gonna read this in college, so I started reading. Right I dropped it off again, but then the new stuff was really good. I've had a subscription to that since I was probably. 10 or 15 because wow. my dad had it and then he would get it for me like he just gifted it to me and he was like That's here awesome. you, so like I, I just read them all the time we had him in the house we always had him in the house and um and then yeah and then they moved everything out to Burbank and then it was still good it was it was still funny and then I guess readership was no good or something yeah, like that because it just yeah. it just just now they're just doing out. reruns until until everybody's subscriptions run out. Sucks. Which is kind of a bummer because, I mean, Mad Magazine's one of those things. Like, I would just leave it around the house and I would catch my daughter reading it, who's, yeah. 10, who's 10. And she wouldn't get all the jokes, but she dug it. Like, she, yeah. liked, when, she liked when they made fun of Trump. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> she, was, she was into it. And I thought it was cute to see a 10-year-old read Mad Magazine. I, I was into it, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and how great are the fold-ups in the back? You can't beat the fold-ups in the back. Oh man, I uh, my my first San Diego Comic Con, I met 
Al Jaffe and I lost my mind. Oh wow, like, that's awesome. Those those were the because it was a, it was a total accident because I went to go see uh, Sergio Aragonés um, because my dad, you know, obviously was a of big course. fan. Mad look at whatever you name it, like it. So like I got a picture with him, I got some stuff signed, and Al Jaffe just happened to be there, and I was like, oh my god, and <laughs> and like nobody knew who he was. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'm really sorry. Can you sign this thing? He's like, yeah, but he, you know, he, he's a million years old. So. Yeah, because he was like 99, wasn't he? Like, is he's still around, isn't he? Like, not around. Is he alive still, Al Jaffe? I think he's still kicking. I want to say I, he's Mort alive. Drucker just died. Yeah, I know that. That, that. one I know. Let me see. I'll but, Google uh, Al Jaffe. And Mort Drucker is the guy who did the Anthrax album, I believe. He did the State of Euphoria album that we were. Al Jaffe is still alive. Incredible. 99 years old. <laughs> And the thing a, is, a, a storied tradition. When you see Al Jaffe's work, you instantly know, like, oh, that's Al Jaffe. Oh yeah. Like he's no, when just... I was a when I was a kid, I my dad and I actually made a Mad magazine together, really? and there was a that's fold awesome. in at the end. Yeah, I have to. I, I I have it somewhere in my closet over here. That's wonderful. <laughs> and it had a fold in with a man vomiting at the end of it. Just, like just, <laughs> I have a brand at this point. Yes, it's all <laughs> yes. poop jokes. Yes. I yep. mean, yeah. But you know what, though? If, if it works, it works, man. Stay in your lane. Stay in your exactly. lane. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Look, if you want to see somebody puke all kinds of colors, just give me a call. I'll try it. <laughs> I, I'm not that expensive. If the price is right, I'll draw your <laughs> I mean, if, if it's if it's got vomit, he like there's a discount. Like There's a discount. For oh, oh you... yeah. I, I discount heavily for vomit pages. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. vomit pages. Other pages, you got to pay the full rate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 because that would be silly, you know, like, why undercut <laughs> yourself if you don't need to? So it just got recently announced, though, that you are doing one of the X books, correct? Yeah, can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, well, you're doing New Mutants, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm, do I'm no. doing Way of X. Oh, uh, that's right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean yes. to. I, I po a thousand apologies. There's no, a thousand there, X look, books, no, so. no. Yeah, exactly. How are you supposed to keep them all straight <laughs> at this point? No apology required, sir. The Way of X. Is that that's yes. what it's called? Now, who who do you get to draw? Who's in this team? Who's? Uh, let me tell you who's in this book. We've got Nightcrawler. I'm We've in. Got... I'm in. I'm in. All right. I, I, I mean, like Nightcrawler, too. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You can't yeah, go wrong, right? Got Ooh, Nightcrawler, okay. Pixie, Loa. We got uh, DJs in there. Let's see, uh, and then a whole ton of other. We 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 introduce some new characters. Uh, the, I'm telling you right now, like I don't like to be. Look, House of X and Powers of Ted really shook up the comic book industry, but like, <laughs> but it kind of did, right? Like it totally changed the way that X Men and mutants works, right? Yes. right. There's some stuff that happens at the end of the first issue that is kind of like, oh shit. Really? Yeah. yeah. And there's some stuff in issue two that, like, by the end of that, you're going, oh, shit, really? Like, we're there. So Cy Spurrier's writing it. and Oh, he's, he's great. He's yes. phenomenal. And he's yeah. not afraid to, you know, kind of shake the banana tree. Is that a term? I don't know. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> is that a thing people say? Sure. <laughs> no, he'll fold the vanilla twice. Yeah, yes. He's not afraid to fold the vanilla as many as three times. And then I will eat it. <laughs> So, like, dude, you've worked with some heavy hitters, too, man. Look at like, you, Cy Spurrier, Fred Cy, Van Monday. I mean, these, I mean, you're talking about, like, I mean, like, heavyweight champions of comics here, my you're man. You're talking I know. to two I, losers on a, on, a, on a winning night about about ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> what were you guys going to do? I don't know. I mean, we've got nothing better He's to got do. one foot in the gold, one fist in the gutter, or however. It is. Backwards. Yeah, man. Instead of the old Ricky Rack. I like to remember where it came from. Exactly. I remember being a loser, nobody. <laughs> now I got two. Count them two crock pots, baby. Yeah. Hey, guys. Look, all I'm saying is just live your dream. Never give up two crock pots. Draw from Marvel Comics. That's all it takes. Just keep at it. <laughs> you can do it. We're just going to keep writing dumb books about shark guys. That's wonderful. That's Shit, cool. yes. That is exactly what the people want. I read that book. It is very good. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. Good, Thank you, you like for it. that. We had fun. Thank you. Yeah, dude. But I mean, the heavy hitters, man. Like, do you do you consider yourself like? It sounds like you're almost blessed, man, with your comic career. Like all these fucking great artists and and people and titles and stuff. People it's from a, the Nerdist. It's wonderful. It's yeah. That's like, yeah. I, I've been awesome. incredibly lucky. I have absolutely zero idea how any of it has happened. I, I really don't. I. It's like because you're talented too. Talent has to play a role. Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it's it's been really wild. Like I, I have 
every anytime I got onto a new book, I'd go, oh, that guy's writing? Heck yeah. Because it was like, I went from Fred Van, well, myself, first of all, <laughs> I went from me, which was a pretty high bar. But then I went from <laughs> me to Fred to Jeff Parker. Oh, I love, how is it working? I love Jeff Parker. I love Jeff Parker. Jeff is amazing. He's, he's, he's one an of my amazing, favorite writers. He's a wonderful human being. He also knows like good comics and that he he, he wrote the James Bond series that I was That's like. right. He's phenomenal. I totally forgot that. And Bobby okay. loves Agents of Atlas. Agents of Atlas awesome. is one of my favorite Marvel things ever. He wrote that. But I mean, everything he writes is great. Like the the Batman 66 stuff was mwah, perfect. Yeah, like he absolutely. did a book for Oni that I love, but I can't remember the name of it. it and that sounds stupid, but like, cause the name is weird. <laughs> But the book is awesome. I can't remember the name because the name is weird. And he did it for Oni Press. So I can't, um, I'd have I mean, to go look on my shelf. Yeah, I, I know I know, what, I, I know what you're thinking is. And I'm like, oh, I know the name of it too. It's, it's weird. Got a, he had a weird name. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great book. It's got a weird name though. And Jeff Parker wrote it. Something about yeah. um, Meteor, Meteor Man. Or something. Meteor Man. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something about a Meteor. I read Meteor yeah, Man it too. Great. It was good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like I, I got to work with Jeff Parker, and then I, I went from that immediately over to Mark Russell, like critical darling and amazing human being, right? Like <laughs> I went working over working over at Marvel. First person I worked with was Rainbow Roll, and then oh, wow. yeah, and then they wanted me to. I don't want to get into that, but so like <laughs> you know, it's been an incredible trajectory. Uh, did Captain America with Tana Hasi Coates, right? Yeah, like. Oh, wow. If there's if there's a radical writer, somehow I got to work with them, and That's I don't know awesome. why. Like Eve Ewing is amazing. Like if you haven't been reading this this Champions run, it's incredibly relevant. It's incredibly powering, empowering for young people. Super well written. And it's just it's, it's really fun. Like she killed it. She did an amazing job on that book. And then like you know, right now I'm working with Cy Spurrier. I don't know how any of this happened. This is wonderful. <laughs> it's all because you did a, like a bullshit piece of fan art for some some podcast or whatever yes so that that that's what got me in at dynamite can i tell you a story about how i got my first job at marvel sure uh, of course it's fan art again don't okay. don't let anybody tell you not to draw fan art because um i drew right when um all new wolverine came out uh you know everybody everybody was lo love that honey badger that gabby kinney so i drew a picture of her Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tom Taylor saw it. I didn't even tag him in it, but he was just like, this is great. And he retweeted it. And I was like, I, I had jokingly said, whenever you guys want to do a Gabby series, I'll draw it. And he was like, so he saw it, retweeted it and tagged his editors. And then like the next morning I had like a, a DM in my inbox from Marvel and they were like, hey, do our editors actually know you? And I was like, no. And he's like, email these guys, good luck. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Wow. So like, did you have to do a hundred samples because we've heard like nope. horror stories of nothing? Just, no. you just walked in day one, like here I am. He did yeah, the basically. Fan art. He did the I, fan here art. I am, give me fucking Nightcrawler. <laughs> Let's get this going. Like that's Here how I go works. again on my own. Like that's, <laughs> that's how it is, man. Dude, no, just... I, I, I sent in, I, I just had a bunch of pages around, right? Right. So like I had all my stuff from Dynamite and I just sent it over and I'm like, I draw these. And, and then I was like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing, right? And I'm then a little skeptical. You took a picture of yourself drawing, doing the splits in between two BMWs, didn't you? <laughs> well, yeah, I did do that, <laughs> okay. and it didn't hurt. But I, I, I paper clipped it to the samples. I mailed them okay, in. Okay, okay. I, just... I looked very impressive, and then, you know, I was like, if I don't get this job, David I can. I... Dale, here I am. Exactly. <laughs> this is wonderful. I can do this karate. It's dangerous. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I, I've like I said, I've been, I have no idea how I've been this lucky, but I've been incredibly lucky in this in this stupid industry that is so dumb. <laughs> well, because it does seem like you know, of course you're talented, and of course you're able to hit deadlines, and of course you're able to do the work that's necessary to 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 get to Marvel, but it does kind of seem like sometimes it's just like a it's a crapshoot. Right. Yeah. Did, did did the right person on the right day see you? That's that's literally what it is. Because I mean, like, you know, I, I remember when I would I hate being this guy because like it's a really, really hard job. But I remember picking up some books and looking at Marvel and be like, I'm better than this guy. What the hell is this? So like, like, <laughs> right. But like, I, I don't I don't like doing that because like, look, man, you got to do so much work so quickly. And sometimes some stinkers get through Like, there's really no way around it. Um, So like I. I you know, it, it's it's that old, you need two out of three, you either need to be amazing, you need to be good to work with, or you need to be on time. Yes. And I know that I'm very easy to work with, and I know that I always hit my deadlines. So. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs>
That's wonderful. But it's so crazy that this entire industry is built on just like happenstance. Like, oh, I saw your stuff that day and cool. You want to you want to draw Spider-Man? <laughs> it's like, you, I guess I do. You know? Yeah, that's a, that sounds like a fun job. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And two out of three ain't bad, so we'll take you. What's and <laughs> and you're so smooth and easy doing this podcasting thing. It's like you have your own podcast. I do have my own podcast. Get booze and Bruce, Booze and Brews podcast, where my wife and her best friend tell each other ghost stories, drink thematically appropriate beer, and I say things that are very stupid in the background. Interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. like a job you were born for. That's <laughs> Oh, man. If I'm not drawing comic books, I'm saying dumb shit. That's <laughs> yeah. If, if we're not that... writing comic books, we're saying dumb shit. Yeah. So. Most, of the time, <laughs> most of the time, we're saying dumb shit while well, in our comic and, books, and, like the and dialogue we put the in dumb our comic shit books, that we yeah. that we say <laughs> in the comic books. It too. actually ends up in the book, and it's cataloged for all to enjoy for the rest of eternity. I love yes. it. Yes. So booze and brews. You've been doing this. You said uh, before we started recording, you have 200 episodes of this thing. Uh, 200. And, I think we're close to 250 at this wow, point. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it basically what happens is is um, my wife and her friend Vanessa will each pick a real world ghost, right? So like Lep Castle is apparently haunted by a thing called the Elemental, right? And they will tell each other sort of the history of the area, what the ghost is, what happens. Uh, like you'll see a man who's about the size of a sheep and he's shadowy and he kind of smells like a fart and then he's very spooky. <laughs> but it, literally, like apparently he smells like uh, sulfur or something like that. Okay. And then he like haunts you on your way home. And then uh, my wife will be like, oh, okay. And then this, uh, this, this particular asylum is haunted by all these crazy people. Um, and then at the end of it, I say, this was the better ghost story you win. And then they, they have chosen a beer that fits thematically with the story that they have chosen. Interesting. That's uh, cool. Yeah. That sounds we really hear, We hear it's kind of funny. <laughs> now, does that happen like once a week? Is this a once a week kind of thing or? Uh, once a week. And then since the, uh, since the pandemic has hit, we have been trying to be uh, kind to our listeners and we've been giving them additional content where on Thursdays we will typically uh do a uh, i guess what is it like an episode watch along recap thing of like a ghost adventures with uh if you're familiar oh, okay, with that show that's fun. okay okay yeah so we just sit around and, and and make fun of those goofballs running around going bro there's a ghost oh dude and then you know we have a laugh about it <laughs> and then um i think for for christmas this year we usually do a christmas episode and then at the end of the year last year uh we did like a DD real play podcast because apparently that's very popular yes, nobody gave a shit in our audience but we liked it. we well, had fun. fun with it so well, sometimes you have to do things for you you know yeah. exactly that's nice Look, I'm going to make what I'm going to make, and you just have to enjoy it. Exactly. All right. Or don't. I don't care. <laughs> exactly. That's weird. Yeah. Now, I noticed that you're wearing an LA Kings hat. Are you a hockey fan? Or do you I just... am a big hockey fan, yeah. That's awesome. And so I take it you are a Kings fan, yes? Yes, yes. because in Wisconsin, where I am from, we only have an AHL team. So ah. as soon as I moved out to LA, I was like, I guess these are my guys now. Because when I first moved out here, the Kings were terrible um i was here during the ziggy palfy years and uh, but say what you want because i'm an old islander fan from when ziggy played for the islers oh he, sure he was a damn good player oh yeah absolutely but there was nobody else on that no, team. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like it was amazing because you could get tickets for cheaper than one beer so it was a really good way to <laughs> you know waste the money you didn't have in college so we would go down and we'd watch We'd watch some hockey because it was like I went to USC, so you could literally just walk down the street and go to a hockey game. Oh, so you're a Trojan too? Fancy. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a storied institution with, you know, uh, many great athletes that have attended there. Didn't Will Farrell go to USC? I he sure did. He should. I, I played basketball with Matt Leinart uh, of the USC Trojans. Really? Yeah. Uh, Interesting. How'd that work out for you? I, I'm, I'm a. I'm not great at basketball. Uh -huh. B. He's much taller than me. <laughs> yes, <he is. laughs> That's yeah. interesting. Matt Leinart. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so you're a USC grad. You moved out to LA. You're a Kings fan. The Kings had a little stretch where they were pretty good for a while. Sure. They won not the Stanley anymore. Cup, right? They won the cup, <laughs> didn't they? Absolutely. They absolutely did. And now all the people that got them there are ancient with big contracts, and they can't get rid of them. So we're in the dark years before the young people that we're cultivating right now become the, young people the that guys. You're cultivating. Yeah. You sound, you sound like a the young, the young the youngins were grooming. Yes. <laughs> that's oh, yeah, that's a bad word. Don't say that grooming. got yeah. that got dark. 
Yes, I'm sorry. I brought it. I brought that energy to your podcast. You know I'll edit that out. I don't want you to lose your job at Marvel. I don't want anybody to have listen. Is he's grooming people? This guy is a creep. <laughs> Well, in the it, champions he's grooming it's, people it sounds yeah. like it sounds like you lived this charmed life my friend it certainly feels that way a lot of the time i mean like i because you know i went from working an office job where i hated every day and everybody was yelling at me and nothing was ever good enough to i get to sit in my house nobody bothers me and i draw fun comic books like okay that's awesome <laughs> yeah you could that's, do a lot worse <laughs> yeah that's really cool man yeah and I mean, and again, you you might be one of the best guests we've ever had on the podcast. So congratulations. Oh, man. Yes. And you're episode 100. So, what? Yeah. This is this, incredible. This is episode 100. You are our 100, not our 100th guest, but you're our 100th show. So congratulations to you. Maybe we'll send you like a commemorative plaque. Oh, that would be great. Or like a, like a koozie yeah. or a mug or something like or that from maybe like I'll, Cafe I'll, Press. So I'll figure something out. We'll send you, I'll email you <laughs> or a gift. Or don't send me anything. It's okay. You know I, I, it was, you know what? The journey was the gift. The, the, the not sending anything sounds the most probable of all this, but you never okay. know. You never know. You never know. It's, you it's know. a crap shoot over here with us. Yeah. I, yeah. You, you I love it. Get, you made like complimentary Metal Shark Pro issues or something. So, so w real quick before we get going, <laughs> when do uh, when does the uh, the size Spurrier book start hitting the shelves, my man? I th I think it's in April. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, okay, okay. I'm super duper bad at this. Usually, what happens is is there's a bunch of like bleeding cool articles about the book that I'm on, and then people start tweeting their reviews, and I go, "Oh, I guess my book's out today." Do you want me to look it up? Way of X is your book. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I'm pretty gonna, sure it's April. We're gonna I try just, and be professional today. I just finished the first issue. So. Nightcrawler leads the way of X Men's future. I like the fact that Nightcrawler is getting his own team. I really like Nightcrawler. He kind of had his own team back with Excalibur. Um, with Excalibur, yeah. and, and, and was, Bob and I, and we and we love Excalibur. So. I do. Uh, Excalibur is my favorite X Men book ever. Um, I don't see a date here. Really? Man. Okay. Well, I need to. I need. I, I need to pick that one up then. Yeah. Here Have it you ever read it? It's great. I have not. I'm hey, not a huge X-Men fan. You know people over there. They'll send you some stuff, right? Like, that's going to be no. like Burke's bro, right? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> I can't. Look, you don't understand how difficult it is for me to even get comps of the things I draw. <laughs> get the hell out of here. So it never changes? The industry never changes whether you're in no. the... The slum house or the penthouse, it's always the same. Always the same. That's that's what they said is you you will you will never own every book you've drawn. And uh I, I only just recently got the email saying some of my books are coming. I don't know which ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was awesome. so sad because like I really, really, really wanted this run on champions like somewhere in the house. And like I have none of them because you can it was go again buy it at the comic book store like everybody else, Mr. Fancy Pants too. But too, too listen, hot. listen, listen, I ask very little. I, I have earned this. <laughs> it says here that your book comes out in April. It says, it hey, I was right. In April. Yes. Written by Cy Spurrier and Bob Quinn. So yeah. And if we want to find you on social media and stuff, where can we find you, Bob? Oh, man. Uh, I, because I'm the worst at branding, they're different on every website. Me if too. you are interested in my idiotic thoughts and occasional drawings, please follow me on Twitter, RobotJQ, R-O-B-O-T-J-Q. If you like just the drawings, but I don't post there anymore because it's a trash hole, Instagram is King of Smaster. <laughs> King of Smaster? What's that all about? <sighs> It's such a long story, but I'll tell it to you anyway. I'd love to hear it. We, we so, want to hear it. So when I was in high school, I visited, <laughs> uh, I visited Mexico. And when I was there, there was a band that was very popular all over the uh, Mexican MTV called uh, Plastilina Mosh. Okay. And I don't okay. know what any of that means, right? But I spoke Spanish and the stuff was enjoyable. And they had a song called Mr. Pimosh that was all over the uh, all over the TV. Everybody loved it. So I picked it up and there was a song on the album that was called Monster Truck. And they did sort of Spanglish in all of their rapping and musical stylings. Okay. So they didn't speak English the best. But the Monster Truck song had the best line ever. It was, yeah, I'm the master blaster and I make disaster. I'm the chaos master. But because of the accent, it sounded like I'm the king of smaster. And I always thought that was really <laughs> funny. And so I didn't think Instagram was going to be a thing. So I was like, I don't know, I'm king of smaster. And then it blew up and became the biggest thing ever. And then I look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That's not, you know what? That could have been worse. That story could have been worse. It wasn't bad. It was just youthful exuberance. Yeah, I'm excited. 
I'm excited about monster trucks. That's what it is. <laughs> and you can tell that it's you because at least you keep one thing consistent on all of your social media handles. The description is always poop train conductor. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want to make sure it's quality Bob Q content, look for poop train conductor. Choo-choo. <laughs> Bob, this was wonderful, man. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you enjoying your dinner with us. And, oh. And, and, and treat yourself to some ice cream. You deserve it after such a smashing. Yes, interview. fold that vanilla three yes. times. Yes. Oh, man, I'm going to. Thank you so much. This has been a delight. <laughs> <laughs>